Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Ibishu Celtia. And right off the bat, I have one kind of major complaint. The order of these vehicles is all over the place. So whenever I want to find a certain one, it's probably going to take me a while. For example, the very first one is race, then we go to base, then we go to show car, and then we have another base one down here. Like, they're just all over the place. So what are we going to start with? Well, obviously, we're going to start with the rotary. No, we're not starting with the base. We always do that. But when we have a rotary option, we're going to start with that. And I don't even care about the rest of the car. What does the rotary engine sound like? That is my question. So let's listen. So it does sound a little bit unusual, but hey, it also revs to 12,000 RPM, so what's not to like about that? This thing revs forever. The statistics of the engine are very similar to a 13B. It's a 1.3 liter engine with two rotors in it, so in a way, it's kind of just a 13B clone. Now, for some fun, let's go through the gap. Ooh, we actually cleared the trees and the water. Okay, well, when I did that, I fully expected the vehicle to drown, so I could say, let's reset it and take a look at the vehicle itself. But it's earned some more driving, man. That was impressive. How about the engine, though? It makes just over 160 horsepower and only like 110 foot-pounds of torque. But that, to me, just gives me a fun engine because you can just ring it out all the time. So we managed to get back on the roads. Let's wreck this thing one final time and then we can look at the damage before we even look at the regular car that's just strange oh what was that something was skidding along y'all saw there were some sparks like right in this area and i have no idea what it was that was weird anyways reset the car and then here is what the car actually looks like without any damage this is as fresh as it can be and it really is quite a cute little car it's just a small little two-door, and I really like also, you'll notice on this one, with it being the rotary, it does have rotary badges on it, and there are badges for every version, so there's like a GTZ badge for the GTZ, a 240BX for the 240BX, and we'll be seeing those guys later on. As for the interior, here is what that looks like, so it is a right-hand drive car, I believe all of the versions you can get there all right hand drive and then if we zoom in a lot to look at the gauges you notice it has a regular tachometer here so you're just always in the red line when you have the rotary version with the revenue like 12,000 it's kind of hilarious but you do have a working steering wheel you have working pedals down there and then here is the back behind us and i legitimately cannot tell if this is a two seat or four seat vehicle even if we take the camera off of the driver's head and stick our head directly back here, you just can't quite tell. So I used an old school trick. You dunk the car into water and it makes it much brighter in the interior. So there are actually no seats here, but there are definitely enough room for seats. So maybe you could say, yeah, in some locations you could have a two plus two. The models in this mod though, they are all just two seaters it appears. Here's another neat feature of this thing. So check this out. If we hit the right buttons, bam, look at it opening up like magic. That is one thing I'm surprised like none of the stock vehicles have actually implemented something like that because there are a handful of mods that do that and I just think it's neat to be able to open up the hood and the trunk and all that. Also the trunk is deceptive. With it being so slanted and the lures and all that, you would think it's like a lift back and that whole glass piece lifts up just like my old RX-7 did but no it actually has a little tiny trunk back here and it's just so small you almost wouldn't think it's a trunk. So like all this space back here is doing nothing unless you want to try to like load things in through the driver's side door and stuff. So yeah, it could definitely be a four-seater car if it wanted to. And then here's another cool thing. So this engine, it's actually a rotary design. Like this isn't just, oh yeah, it's a rotary engine. Then they reuse the inline six from the other version. No, this looks like a rotary engine. You can see there are two separate cases for each rotor. And actually, if you look close enough, it even says 13B on it. So you know how I was saying it's kind of like a, a 13B knockoff? Well, maybe a little bit more than a knockoff considering it says 13B. Although, if you look at the time period for this vehicle, it says in the thing, it was released initially in 1963. 
The first Mazda with a rotary engine came out in 1967, and they didn't have the 13B until 1973. So you know what? Who stole from who? Mazda stole from a Bishu. Imagine that. Also, if you're curious, yeah, you can drive with everything open. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, and it's actually surprisingly durable. For example, if we slam into the sign, we got some damage, but everything held on surprisingly well. In fact, things hold on a little bit too well. I don't know if we'll be able to demonstrate it with the car driving a little bit crooked, but if you smash the doors into things, a lot of the time, the doors are mighty strong, but it's just too hard to really get the precision I need with the way this thing is driving. So instead of worrying about that, let's just go ahead and wreck it into some trees. Come here, trees, I'm gonna get you. Door, I'm gonna drive right through most of you. That was not what I expected. Uh, we're stuck and we can't see anything, so I bring this back and it automatically opens everything back up. But look at this. So we hit the door and you see the door is so strong, it actually shifts us around a little bit when we hit it. So here, boom, it yanks us to the side. So these doors are really locked in place when they're opened up, which allows us to do some fun and wacky things like you're seeing right now, where you really hit the doors hard into things and get yanked around by them. And then once you close the doors in the hood and the trunk, it's just like normal. There's no locking to them. They'll bounce around just like they would normally. And it's like the car's waving at me like, hey, I'm over here, guys. How cute. So now, let's go ahead and wreck this thing. Gotta get a decent speed, and then we are gonna jump another gap of water. I like jumping gaps of water with this thing, apparently. And it does very, very well at that. Except it landed upside down. But we can real easily fix that. Just grab it and do the double yank. Oh, that was clean. So you can see the roof has been squished in quite a bit. And it looks kind of funny. The windshield is so short and low. If you're inside of this thing and you didn't get squished, you can't see nothing out of it except for this tiny slit. Drivability wise, we still got some driving though. So bring it up to highway speeds and then crash it once more and that'll probably finish it off. So here we go in about 80 miles per hour and let's just chuck it into the dirt. Got some air time. Oh, that's a big hit. And rear drive shaft broken, so it is done. But here is a look at the damage once more. There's a tree in the way. Get out of the way, you stupid tree. You got another tree here, so you gotta go up and down. So there is the damage, and then there's that rotary engine, and we can go ahead and reset it. And I think that's enough with the rotary. We gotta look at the other versions of the vehicle, like the base version. So with the base version, we have an automatic and a manual. We're gonna go with the automatic, and we had an automatic and a manual for the rotary as well, but it didn't really match up well with the automatic. It just kind of bogged down a little bit, so that's why I was using the manual. But here, we have the automatic. So with the base version, it has a less sporty suspension setup, it has drum brakes, and it has a 2.4 liter inline six engine that makes 137 horsepower. So that's about 37 horsepower less than the rotary we were driving earlier. You'll also notice it doesn't rev nearly as high, and then it actually overheats if you floor it for too long, and too long is very, very soon. You see on the bottom right, oh, never mind, you see on the bottom left, it's a coolant overheating. So this thing is dying. It does not like being floored for a long period of time. When they made this car, they said, you are not allowed to do sporty maneuvers like that. That is illegal, sir. And I say, too bad. You can't stop me from flooring it. Nothing can stop me except airtime and you can't turn in the air. That can stop me. That was a nice crash. And looking at the damage, this thing held up surprisingly well, but also kind of terribly, because the body is pretty good because it hit it like a downward angle. But then you look at the frame, and the frame is just mangled because it hit it a downward angle. So inside of the car, some mangling going on in there as well. Oh, look at that. The transmission has impaled the driver. That's not good. Yeah, transmissions aren't supposed to do that. Again, oh, well, that's right. Right-hand drive. So it impaled the passenger. Excuse me. I was mistaken there. Anyways, I uh, can't do anything, obviously. I do like the way it looks like it's kind of like dancing or something. It looks like you're watching like Cars, the movie, and that's what this one of the cars do. They just do weird things like that. <laughs> Except, of course, being crushed in the front. They don't usually do that in cars. Anyways, we'll go ahead and reset it, and then we're going to change vehicles already because I kind of used the rotary to look at the basics of the vehicle. So we're going to move over to the 240BX. So with this one, it's a lightly modified version of the one we were just driving. You notice it does have 240BX badging. So it actually has the exact same 2.4 liter inline six engine, but they really let it breathe in this one. So it makes about the same horsepower as the rotary. It has 166 horsepower but it doesn't rev as high, so it's not as fun to drive for me. 
So we're gonna do a real fast wreck on this thing. Once we get it up to speed, which is basically now, we just gotta crash it. So into the rocks we go! And we missed the first rock and we are bouncing all over the place. Oh, save it, save it. Nope. Could not save it. I thought I could just for a second. I mean, I said I was gonna crash and then a half second later I said I'm gonna save it. I am very fickle, aren't I? Also been really difficult. And what else is really difficult? Seeing where we're going. We just got smoke screened here. I can't see nothing, so we're crashing. And that has completely killed it. So we look at the damage, and we still got smoke screen all over the place, so we can't see everything, but we can see a majority of things. I do notice the roof is kind of like bouncing just a little bit. You see that? Kind of strange. And we are already done with the 240BX. Now, we're gonna go to the GTZ, which is a really nice color. But performance-wise, it's pretty much identical to the 240BX. It just has some cosmetic extras, like for example, an upgraded steering wheel and upgraded chairs that actually have a headrest. And it also has the louvers like you saw on the Rotary Edition. So if I drive the GTZ and the 240BX side by side, I really couldn't tell you a difference in terms of how they drive. They feel pretty much identical to me. So we're taking this thing on the dirt, which isn't really the smartest thing to do. This is not designed for driving on the dirt, but it works fine. There is one version that would work better than fine, though. There is a rally version of the vehicle, and I think we should take a look at that. But first, one final wreck. Let's hit this jump, and yeah, drive shaft broken, so it's done. We could take it off of the tree and look at the damage a bit closer. Get on your wheels. There we go. Another crash rate kind of like looks like it's doing a dance maneuver. It's just the front end gets so jacked up on one side. It just looks like it's dancing, man. And the, the transmission pushing down like that, that doesn't help. So anyways, we're going to take a look at the on Rally version. So this one's a rally legend, apparently. And it is decently fast. So it has all the rally upgrades you'd expect. It's a stripped down interior, roll cage, upgraded engine, rally suspension, all that good stuff. And you see, we are moving decently well. The one thing is it has more power than I can practically use on this dirt. I'm having to definitely limit my acceleration so I can remain in control of this thing as I just barely tapped that corner. Should not affect the way it drives at all though. Oh, this is not exactly an ideal location. It looks like a rally course, but it's just a bit too steep and a bit too bouncy for this vehicle to really excel. This is more like truck territory, but it can do just fine. We're just gonna move slower than ideal. How about this? Oh, whoa, okay, well, we just crashed it. I just barely clipped a rock. I did not expect that. So let's look at the damage, and then let's go ahead and reset this guy, and I wanna try using his power on the paved roads. So that way you can get an idea of just how fast it actually is. So we're already up to 60 miles per hour, and we should be able to pull almost up to 100 before we go for a little flight. Oh, we cleared the trees and into the water. Oh, 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 turn it, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> I froze physics, I freaked out. So we turned the engine off, and then we can do a recovery mission. It was only at 70% flooded, so we should be able to just yank it out of the water and it'll drive perfectly fine. We just took it for a little dip to cool off the engine, right? So here we go, and then stop, turn on the engine. Yeah, it worked fine. Okay, can we drive actually? The engine turns on. That was the first thing we tested. We gotta see, can it drive? Come on, yes, it can. So let's get back to the paved road and then we will crash it. And it feels like we got a lot of drivability here, so we can probably go up to 100 miles per hour for this next crash. Since I didn't manage to hit it the first time, we're gonna hit it damaged. <laughs> That's the goal at least. It is a little bit difficult to handle, but it can put the full power down and it can keep accelerating pretty much as good as a undamaged version could do. So there we are over 100 miles per hour, still going, but I'm just gonna crash into the first corner there is Right here, we're just gonna go perfectly straight. Bam! Front axle broken. Maybe it can still drive. Nope, rear drive shaft broken. It's done. It's also annoyingly kind of buried in the trees. You notice, I try to use maps more often than not that don't have trees, because I don't like having to yank cars out of trees. <laughs> so there is a look at the damage. We have completely ruined this vehicle. So now let's go ahead and move on to another version. We are gonna take a look at the police version. Now there are two police versions. There's the very basic Japanese police. This is just a base version basically that's been upgraded a bit to give it the police stuff. Then there's the police interceptor. This guy is a monster. 
So we're going to try him out first. The real question is, is this actually a police car? Because, yeah, it has the police paint job. It has the light and the horn and all that. But then if you look at it, this is just straight up a race car with a little bit of police look to it. Because it has a roll cage. It has a racing front splitter. It has a wing on the back. And look at these wheels. These are big, fat, beefy wheels. And the suspension setup, there is so much camera on this thing. That's like a track day setup on it. This is not a police car. This is a track car designed to look like a police car, man. You can't fool me. So to give an idea just how fast it is, here's a straightaway, and we're gonna give it all it can do. So really flooring it, it's got like 45 PSI of boost, and we're up to 150 miles per hour just like that. And we are still accelerating, but we're now flying through the air, completely ruining the vehicle. So yeah, that thing ain't your ordinary police car. Not even close. And with the roll cage, it did hold up surprisingly well for how violent that collision looked. So there's the damage, and then let's go ahead and bring it back up to the road and do a fun little test. We are going to use the Detrox Kaido Racer versus the police car and see if we can escape from them. So with this one, we got the crazy exhaust on it, and then it has a very, very wide body kit. But ironically, I think the tires on this thing are thinner than the ones on the police version, which just have a little bit wider fenders on it. And on the front, we have the external cooler, and then, of course, the crazy-looking paint job. So can this thing outrun the police? I don't think it will be able to. That police car is insane. Actually, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a head start. I just need a tiny bit of a head start because they are that fast. So there's my little gap I have, and they should be chasing after me. Yep, I see them coming. My only hope is that they are not able to control the police car and they crash into something because that thing feels very good in a straight line. Little bit of a struggle when you go around corners. Are they still behind me? Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, they're coming fast, I bet, too. So with this being the Kaido Racer, that means we'll be racing on the Kaido area, which is like Tokyo Extreme Racers, basically. And those roads are real nice, smooth highways that have long straightaways where you can really accelerate. We have half of that here. We have the long straightaway, but it's not really smooth, so you can tell the suspension is very stiff. You feel every single bump there is, and it's doing all right. But I'm going to show you my secret escape the police technique. Check this out. First, you flip the car over. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know where I was going with that. That was not at all that I was trying to do. Hey! Ha! 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 It worked! My, my, my whole strategy worked exactly as I planned it. The cop wrecked themselves and I'm back on my wheels, still driving. I am the best driver ever at escaping the police. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at another version of the vehicle. We're going to be looking at the WF Show Car. So with this one, you get a very stanced vehicle. And then it also has the rotary engine, which is kind of nice. And I don't know if I recognize the suspension sounds on this vehicle. Like, as it bounces around, it just sounds a little bit different. So I'm going to let you listen in and see if you hear that too over the sound of the engine. I don't know, it just sounds different. Anyways, this car hates speed bumps. So to simulate a speed bump, we're going to try to hop the curb and see if we get stuck. <laughs> just go up on the curb. And, hey, it has enough ground clearance to not exactly do that. <laughs> we're, st <laughs> we're stuck. We're actually stuck right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got free. Okay, so yeah, this thing is very low to the ground. You need to be a responsible driver to drive that. I'm not being responsible enough, so let's go ahead and move on. Next up, we have one that's pretty similar to the Kaido Racer we were driving earlier with a couple of small differences on it. So we got, again, the big exhaust, the wide body kit, and then it just has this really crazy looking front. By the way, if you're driving at night, yeah, this is what it looks like with the headlights on. It just blocks the headlights, so apparently you can only drive this during the daytime, or else you can't see anything at all. As for the way it drives, it doesn't feel very fast at all. It feels pretty close to the regular versions of the vehicle. 
So let's just do a real quick wreck to see how the front end handles a collision because it looks so different. We're gonna use 16 times slow-mo here and boom. Nice crash. There goes the exhaust flying off in the distance. Well, it didn't go that far. It looked like it was getting on slow-mo. So there's the front. It doesn't look much different after you crash it. You know, once you crash it, it kind of has a piece fall off and then the hood crunches just like normal. Cool wheels on this one, actually. I like those wheels. I'm 99% certain those wheels are a part of the mod and they are not stock because I do not recognize them. So now let's move on to a fast version of the vehicle. We are going to be taking a look at the devil. So with this one, we have a couple of extra upgrades on it. It has a front splitter and then a small wing on the rear. Give it a little bit more stability to high speed because this thing has about 500 horsepower from the same basic engine you saw in the base version of the vehicle. It's just been tuned a ton. So it has a whole backstory and it's basically saying, yeah, this is basically the Devil Z as a different vehicle. So I'm trying to bring this thing up to 200 miles per hour because it claims it can get that fast. But I don't think we're going to be able to do it on this particular road. But we are still moving fast up to about 150 miles per hour. And we are going to crash. There's no way to do that corner that fast. So there is a look at the damages. We have completely wrapped it around the tree. And now we are going to change maps. We are going to head over to West Coast USA. And we're going to do some drag racing, actually. So we're going to head to the drag strip on West Coast USA. And we're actually going to be doing a handful of drag races here because a bunch of the vehicles are well suited for the drag strip. First up is the Fast But Not Quite Furious. And this is very obviously a clone of the Charger from Fast and the Furious. It even has a big fat supercharger sticking out of the engine bay. This one has a 5.5 liter V8. This is not the inline six of the other ones. And one thing that's kind of funny is part of the supercharger is still sticking through the hood they cut a giant hole in the hood and that was not enough we need more space for the big engine so let's go ahead and get an AI out here to race me they'll probably have the exact same vehicle yeah we'll put the cinematic camera off so we can just get ready to race and this one can definitely be a handful it's probably the hardest to control out of all the vehicles in the mod so let's see how well we can do with this thing Gonna do a nice gentle start with it on the drag strip. Don't want no drama like the AI. They got drama. They are spinning out. Oh my goodness. You call that a crash? Come on, AI. Let me show you how to crash it. Yeah, that's how you crash at the drag strip. So this thing, yeah, it's very hard to control. Not even the AI can control it, apparently. So let's do an actual run with this. I just want to make sure I finish. That's my only goal here at this point with this car. Just finish the quarter mile drag strip. I have very low expectations so here we go nice and gentle on the start don't want to do anything crazy ai is going crazy oh my goodness they're gonna come into my lane aren't they we gotta outspeed them so they don't crash into me oh now i'm losing control now there we go oh that's funny because the ai didn't finish yet because they spun out there's no like slow motion here's the finish line it's just it, there we are we're done ha <laughs> Oh, yeah, there it is. What time did they get? What time did I get? Let's see. I got a 1085.6. They got 19.336 at 14 miles an hour. What the heck? All right. So let's go ahead and do another drag race. We'll do the next drag version. This is the electric drag version. So this one is the only electric version of the car there is, and it's made just for drag racing. Although it doesn't really feel like it's perfect for drag racing because it's just rear wheel drive. And I feel like if you have an electric drag car, it just makes so much sense to give it that all wheel drive and you get super easy, great launches every time. What is the AI doing? You dirty cheater. What was that? Come on now, that ain't right. They were like halfway down the strip before it even started. I don't understand that. Dirty, dirty cheaters. I saw you what you were doing, man. That ain't right. Unbelievable. So next up, we have the drag, which is just a very regular drag version of the vehicle. Hopefully this time, the AI can actually drive it correctly. This one is quite a bit faster than the Fast and the Furious one we were driving before. And thankfully, it's a heck of a lot easier to control. What was that? What just happened to the AI? What are they doing, dude? I don't know what just happened. I gotta see, what did the AI just do there? Because that made absolutely no sense to me. They just like exploded out of the start. So they like jiggle it and then just what? <laughs> oh, that is so bad. They like tear apart the whole rear end. What are you doing, you idiot? Let me show you how a real man drag races right quick, okay? After that, I'll show you how a real woman drag races. 
You'll see what I mean later on. So they're lined up, ready to go. And since they're going to spin out, I'm going to take over their lane. That is my lane now. You can't tell me what to do. Disqualified. They're disqualified for blowing up at the starting line. So there is 175 miles per hour at like 8 seconds. That was a very fast run. And there is a very fast crash to finish it up. And I'll let this thing roll all over the place. But I'm pretty sure the AI is not going to cross the finish line in this time. And it's not even going to finish it all for the AI. So we'll bring the car back. And now I'm going to show you how a real woman would drag race. Because we got this one called Gasser Serious Girl. So I don't know if it's actually just because it's supposed to be like, oh yeah, it's a female drag racer. Or if it's just the name of the car. But anyways, this one's like an old school drag car. This is a car from the time period. It doesn't have a big, fancy, modern V8 engine swap. It just runs with a much more ordinary engine for that time period in terms of drag racing. And it's by far the slowest of the drag cars you'll be seeing. But it's made for drag racing, so it's got to do a run on the strip. Got to rev it up and launching it. It's a pretty hard launch. <laughs> It really wants to go. And this is a naturally aspirated engine. It's doing the quarter mile in under 12 seconds at 130 miles per hour. The AI actually did it. And they had a faster trap speed than me somehow too. So that does it for all of the drag versions of the vehicle. Like I said, there are quite a few different ones that are drag racing. And now we can take a look at the track racing ones. If we can stop in time to get to the track. Oh, there we go. Is this thing like asymmetrical with the wheels a little bit no it's just the wheels are so fat maybe it is i don't know it looks like this might have shifted the whole drivetrain a little bit to the right could just be imagining that though because that was a really hard launch we had so next up we're going to take a look at some of the track racing versions first off is the silhouette racer so this is like a straight up race car version of it it has 500 horsepower some absolutely insane aerodynamics on it which give it unusual handling characteristics uh it does not want to oversteer at all it's like driving an arrow it feels like it is really really unusual and it's just because it has so much downforce from the box on the rear basically that's what gives it these very weird characteristics so like this is it full steering to the left you cannot get this thing to oversteer at all it's going to understeer all day watch this even if we like do a little e-brake maneuver in it you see how it just straightened out like that? It is a very, very weird vehicle. I don't care for how it drives at all, but it's definitely unique. That's for sure. It's not the characteristics I would want in a race car though for me. I prefer the car just oversteer and then I control it. With this one, it's just, it never feels like it wants to turn in tight enough for me and I don't like it. We also popped the tire, so. Let's go ahead and finish this guy off by crashing him into the wall and we'll just drive the wall until we eventually crash into another wall. Get as much damage as we can on this unusual bodywork. There we go. So this one's also a semi-tube frame chassis. You can kind of see the tube frame in the front there. And then here's the damage. All kinds of just beat up weird body parts all over the place. Especially on the rear right there. That is where the damage is at. So I'll reset this guy and then we're going to take a look at a really unusual version. This is the burnout version. So this thing is just made for doing burnouts. So you look, it has bicycle tires in the rear and then wider tires on the front. Not by much, but they're a little bit wider and it does great burnouts. Like you just hold the accelerator down. And it's like, yeah, it's going to do a burnout for you. You don't have to do nothing. Look, nothing. I don't have to do anything. Just amazing burnouts all day. You also notice with the engine, it's a dual carburetor setup that is sticking through the engine bay. It also a supercharger down there. It looks like. And if this car represents any country, it's got to be Australia, right? Right? This is an Australian car. If you look at the license plate, it even has an Australian flag on it. It's only on the front, so that's kind of weird. Like, who has a license plate only on the front? There it is. That's the Australian flag. And Australia, nobody does burnouts like them, man. They know how to do burnouts. And that's all we're going to do with that. That's what it's great for. It does burnouts like that perfectly. So next up, we got the drift version, and it's got all the kind of upgrades you'd expect, including a welded differential, and look at that churning radius. That was amazing. And one thing I noticed though, for some reason with the drift version, I kind of struggle with transitions on this one more than I normally would. So that's like when you're sliding from the left 
and then you go to the right with this one, I always just kind of seem to struggle a little bit more than most vehicles. I think it's just because it has a pretty short wheelbase. So that makes it a little bit more sketchy when you're trying to go from left to right. Like you saw there, I kind of like paused just because I felt like it was just moving so fast and violently. It's a little sketchy, man, but it works. It works perfectly well for drifting until it doesn't. The funny thing is, you think, oh yeah, this thing's going to be able to drive for a long time, bouncing off the rev limiter. Not exactly. The turbocharger is already overheating. And then the more we do it, the more things start to overheat. The coolant's now overheating, and yeah, before you know it, this thing's not going to want to drive anymore. So it's only for drifting in very short bursts, I guess. Uh, that'll be all we can do from him before he really starts to overheat and die. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at the next version, which is a really strange one. It's the Omami Game Special. And this car is just whacked. So look at the suspension on this thing, whacked. Look at the fenders, whacked. Look at the wing, whack. Look at the exhaust, whack. The front, whack. This car is wacky all over the place. Even the hood and the fenders, they're wacky. Everything is weird. Also, it doesn't really drive good with the suspension being the way it is. Like, it doesn't even look like the wheels are touching the ground right. It's so cambered up. It is a wacky car. But it can drive fine. Like, it, it doesn't handle good, but it handles fine. You know, I looked at it, I expected it to handle terribly, but it's fine. It doesn't handle good, but it's acceptable. <laughs> I like when it backfires. It actually just like shoots a piece of fire over the hood of the vehicle and it just pollutes too. Now that's great. Uh, see, this car is so stupid, it's great. All right, let's just go ahead and do a little, uh, little boop. That was a big boop. Who am I kidding? Oh, it can still put down power? Yeah, somehow it can put down power. Unfortunately, wheels aren't touching the ground enough to actually do anything with it. Next up, we have some basic race versions of the vehicle. So we have the race version, and then we also have the track day version, which we're going to grab as well. And then the last one that we haven't taken a look at yet, I believe, is the toge version. So we're going to get all three of these. These are the last three to take a look at. And they're all kind of similar. They're all made for going fast and going around corners. And you know they all look pretty similar as well, with just minor differences between them. If I was to pick just one to drive out of the three, which would it be? You know, I like this one because it has a cool hood. Like, if you look closely, it is like a carbon fiber hood, so that looks pretty cool to me. So start off with this guy going completely off the road. Yep, that's fine. So he is down on power compared to the other ones because he's made more for, like, mountain racing, where you can just use the downhill to your advantage if you wanted to, you know, kind of like uh, Initial D style with the AE86. It was never that high in power, but it was lightweight, so it could do downhill great. If you want power, you get the RX-7, yeah. Aha, everybody likes a good RX-7, right? Tight corner. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. I decided to do this corner at the last second. <laughs> All right, so that's that one. Here's the next one. This one is faster in a straight line by a decent amount. It also has a more planted suspension feel. Like, it's more track-focused where it needs that smooth road. Where the other one, it feels like it could coat more with bumpy roads like you would see in the mountaintops. Nice flat as it goes to that corner, you see. And as it accelerates good bit faster all the way up to 100 miles per hour and then hello other car Ugh. and you know what we're gonna do with the other one right yeah, he's going in the pile too although i feel bad throwing him in the pile because he has a rotary engine and you know me i just love rotary engines so out of three he is the fastest he's also probably the hardest to control because it's easy to just put too much power down and then overshoot the corners just a little bit like i'm doing right here yeah that's great if I was on the road the whole way, you would notice how much faster it is. But even then, once I get lined up and put the power down, yeah, there we go, up to 110, 120, and then into the pile. Beautiful. Oh, look, there's some fire. Two fires. Cool. And I believe that that's every vehicle, but it's hard to know because it's like, wait, what if I forgot one? Like, oh, this one, the Rayo 17 Sylvia's Custom. That's not a Sylvia. You can't fool me. So I think I forgot that one. I forgot to write it in the script. That's terrible. Uh, whoops. So let's just take a look at it. Yeah. So the problem was, is when I was writing up all the cars, it, they're not organized. So it's really easy to kind of be like, oops, I missed one when I was writing the list of them. So that's kind of bad. So what is this? I don't know. It's not in the script. Why does it have only one thing on the lights? What is this? Look at that. This is why you need scripts. Otherwise you do this. You don't want to do this. Does that have a roll cage? Yes, it do. That just looks kind of like a, uh, 
like a track day version of a vehicle, basically. I don't know what's up with these lights, though, man. Yeah, this is just... Okay, sure, we have one cover for some reason. That's... Okay. How fast is it? Decently fast, but not rotary fast. Get up to 100 miles per hour. Maybe it's fast as the rotary. It's pretty close. I just didn't get the traction right first. Uh-oh, turbocharger overheating. Man, this, this whole mod, I think it just needs... A bigger radiator option for the race cars, man, because they overheat so fast for some reason. It's like, I want to go fast, man. I want to overheat. Although it seemed like the track day and the race weren't as bad. This one's more like an idiot who forgets to upgrade the coolant, but he upgrades the engine and stuff. Kind of like a real person would do. Because, you know, they just drive it on the streets, so they never have to actually take it to the track where it would overheat. Because on the streets, you can't use it enough to overheat it. Anyways, now we have covered every version of the vehicle off a of script. Back to script. The script says to go to Leap of Death. And according to the script, we're going to jump off of here using the electric drag version. And we're using this one so we can see the underside of the vehicle because looking at the underside while you're driving isn't the most convenient thing to do. But flying through the air, that works great. So going off the edge at decent speeds, and you can see, so this thing actually has a fully electric style drivetrain. There is no regular engine. That big chunk in the middle is the battery, and then there is the motor that delivers all the power to the rear. And you look at it and you think, well, how hard could it be to also make it all-wheel drive? It couldn't be that hard, right? Who knows? Anyways, we're going to let it go all the way to the bottom. We're going to do this at full speed. And then that will be the end for this video. Unless it looks so dramatic, I feel like it needs another run in slow-mo. But I didn't see anything crazy dramatic there. That's about what you'd expect out of a leap of death drop. Real nice bounce there. So anyways... Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by watching the AI spin out on drag races and wondering, how in the world can they not drive in a straight line? What is wrong with the AI? Seriously, what was wrong with them, man? So, do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Oh, it's still going. I thought it was going to stop. There it goes. We got a few extra seconds. So bonus footage.